At the beginning of 2019, I sat down and made a list of bare minimum goals I wanted to accomplish. They weren't necessarily resolutions, but were more things I thought I would actually be able to do. One of these goals was to read at least one book a month. I read 11 books in 2019. I've never been the biggest fan of nonfiction, but in January I picked up A History of the World in Six Glasses and wow, I could not put this book down. All of human history really was fueled by cups of coffee and Coca-Cola and you can't convince me otherwise. Something about this book changed my mindset and I spent 2019 enjoying a little more history, a little more self-help, and a little more nonfiction than I ever have before. The Hobbit is one of my favorite books of all time. It's a simple kid's story that can be enjoyed at almost any age. Fellowship is not that. Fellowship is dark and adult and just so dense with story. It's got Frodo and Sam, new songs every other page, and orcs and elves and men and everything in between. I mean, it's the Lord of the Rings. Of course it's great. I look forward to reading the rest of the trilogy when I work up the courage to open the two towers. When I left home and went to college, I realized that I'm a long way from the man I want to be. Admiral McRaven's speech was an eye-opener and I took a lot of advice from him. I'm learning to dare greatly in pursuing my dreams. I'm working on staying encouraged, growing from my failures, and never giving up. And I'm starting the day by making my bed. When Breath Becomes Air may be the saddest book I read in 2019. It really put life into perspective and made Paul Kalanithi's fight with cancer so personal. His heart is on every page and his story is tragic, but there's a beauty found in what he left behind. I truly realized just how important things fall apart is one day when I carried it into my college's dining hall. The man swiping me in recognized it and asked me what I thought of it, and when I said I had really enjoyed it so far, he gave me a big smile and proudly told me that it was written in his home country of Nigeria. It's a special book, it's an important book, and Okonko's story will stay with me for a very long time. Kurt Vonnegut is one of my favorite writers, and in A Man Without a Country, it feels like he is both at his most honest and most angry. He's not hiding behind a character, he's not escaping to Saturn or traveling through time, he's furious and hopeless and expressing it in his own unique voice. It's very different from Breakfast of Champions and Slaughterhouse-Five, but it was still something he wrote and something I enjoyed. Fahrenheit 451 is one of the great American novels. It's dark and compelling and has an opening line for the ages. Bradbury is truly one of the best and I feel like I could pick it up and read it all over again along with almost any other one of his short stories or novels. Outliers was another book I did not expect to enjoy as much as I did. I was completely engrossed by the writing and the way Gladwell shows how the great artists, computer programmers, and hockey players were shaped by their surroundings and their tens of thousands of hours of work. Outliers was the most impactful and engaging book I read this year, and if I learned one thing, it's to not let an opportunity pass me by. The Holocaust is not an easy subject to talk about, nor should it be taken lightly. Why then is a comic book about the Holocaust so powerful? It's because Art Spiegelman uses his medium to really show how terrible a time it was. A picture is worth a thousand words, and the pages full of mice and cats tell a truly horrifying story. I read some sad books this year. I read about a man facing death and when breath becomes air. I heard a father's account of the Holocaust in Mouse 2, and I saw a bleak vision for the world in Fahrenheit 451. The Things They Carried was the hardest book to read this year. It is a story of loss, the loss of life, of innocence, of love, and as I read, I lost trust in the narrator. By the end of the book, I didn't know which stories were true and which stories were fiction, but sometimes the truth is scarier than fiction. I didn't read anything in November. I started the moviegoer. I didn't enjoy it. I didn't finish. I didn't read much else. 80s movies are great and this book just reaffirms that fact. I want to make movies that have characters as great as John Hughes's, stories as good as The Princess Bride, and with as much heart as Hadley Freeman put into writing her novel. 
Life moves pretty fast, left me feeling good and wanting to watch all of my favorite movies all over again. I really enjoyed every one of the 11 books I finished this year. The things they carried took me three months to read, meaning, yes, I missed my goal, but I kept on going. Picking up a book became more of a good daily habit, and the things I carried away from these books are the reason I read any of them in the first place.